Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. So this is a presentation that I gave at the SciTech 2024 uh, conference um, on some research that we did into study stability measures for aircraft. Um, so there's a couple different ways that we normally look at the pitch stability of an aircraft, for example. Um, one measure is called the static margin. And this is a ratio of the neutral point location to the aircraft mean chord. Um, now, the use of the aircraft mean chord is somewhat arbitrary. It comes from how we non-dimensionalize the uh, aircraft pitching moment. Um, but uh, th this, this measure is frequently used to analyze the static stability of, of the, excuse me, the pitch static stability of the aircraft. But that being said, this static stability isn't the only thing we want to measure when we're analyzing the dynamics of an aircraft. And so Phillips um, developed what he called the dynamic margin. And so this is a ratio of the maneuver point location to the radius of gyration, the pitch radius of gyration. And he noted that that was a valuable measure of the pitch dynamic stability of the aircraft. Um, and, and we'll talk a little bit about, about that in a moment. Um, so we noticed that these things were done in pitch. However, no one had ever studied these in roll and yaw. And so we wanted to look at first could this, these same properties be developed for roll and yaw? And if they could, how would changing those properties affect the aircraft handling qualities? So first I'm gonna give a little bit of background in the pitch axis, um, and then we'll talk about roll and yaw. So when we look at this, this pitch axis, there's a couple points I wanna focus on. First is the center of gravity location where I'm putting my cursor there. And then the third, the, uh, excuse me, the first is the center of gravity location. The second is this pitch neutral point. Now, once again, that neutral, the pitch neutral point is the point about which a change in the pitching moment with respect to angle of attack is zero. And over here, we have the pitch maneuver point, which is the point at which if the CG were located, an infinitely small change in the elevator would cause an infinitely large change in the um, normal load factor. And so using this definition for our pitch neutral point, we can develop a pitch static margin, which is a ratio of the pitch stability to the aircraft lift slope. And you can see that there. And then um, stepping towards developing the location for this pitch maneuver point, we have to develop some sort of a relationship between the pitch rate and the normal load factor. And, and that's the relationship shown here. This is, um, once again, these, these are things that were originally developed by Phillips. Um, and and uh, this relationship he called the relationship for the dynamic pitch rate, and that's this Q cup parameter there. And we can use that relationship between the pitch rate and the normal load factor to develop the pitch dynamic margin, once again originally developed by Phillips, which is in terms of this pitch static stability as well as some pitch damping as well and, and inertia. Now you'll notice these little cup terms, those cup terms indicate that these these moments, for example, are non-dimensionalized by the pitch radius of gyration rather than the mean chord that we have over here. And this Q-cup term relates to how this, uh, this pitch rate is non-dimensionalized. And for more information on that, you can check out the paper. And so once again, this is all, this is nothing new. This is originally done by Phillips. And so we wanted to carry this to the roll and yaw axes. And so first, let's talk about roll. So we have these three different points. Once again, we have a center of gravity. We have a roll neutral point. And um, before I define that, we have this radial angle here. Now, this radial angle is the angle that the free stream makes with respect to the roll axis in this radial direction. So it's a function of alpha and beta of our angle of attack and side slip. And this roll neutral point is the point about which a change in the rolling moment with respect to this radial angle is zero. And we can use that definition that we've, we've created to develop a roll static margin, which is a ratio of the roll stability to the side force lift slope. Now, the next thing we must do um, to determine the location of the roll maneuver point is develop a relationship between the yaw rate and the side force load factor, and that's what's shown here. And we have this dynamic yaw rate, similar to what we've talked about on the previous slide. Why didn't we use the roll rate? Well, for more information, you can check out the paper. Uh, and we can use that relationship to develop 
the location of the roll maneuver point. So this roll maneuver point is this guy right here. And that roll maneuver point is the point at which if the CG were located, an infinitely small change in the ailerons will cause an infinitely large change in the side force uh, load factor. And you can see it's got a little bit of roll static stability in there as well as some damping uh, due to yaw rate and our roll inertia. So we've developed this for roll. Now let's talk about yaw. So we have, once again, we have some CG location. We have some yaw neutral point, which is the point at which a change in the yawing moment with respect to side for, or excuse me, side slip angle is zero. And we can use that to develop the yaw static margin, which is a ratio of the yaw stability to the side force lift slope. And we can use that same relationship we talked about on the last slide relating uh, yaw rate to side force load factor. And we can develop this location for the yaw maneuver point, which is this point down here. And this yaw maneuver point is the point at which if the CG were located, an infinitely small change in the rudder would cause an infinitely large change in, in the side force load factor. And once again, we can use that to develop the yaw uh, dynamic margin shown here. Um, now, once again, these cut parameters are due to non-dimensionalizing non with, uh, with respect to this um, yaw uh, radius of gyration. And then, uh, so, so we have this static stability term, and then we also have this damping, and, and also we're including inertia in this, in this measure. So now we've developed these, these dynamic, static and dynamic margins in roll pitch and yaw. Um, what's the next step? Well, well how, how would these things change handling qualities? So typically when we look at dynamic mode approximations, we do them in terms of aerodynamic dimensionless coefficients or in terms of dimensional aerodynamic derivatives. And as I mentioned before, we wanted to take, take a look at rearranging or reformulating these approximations in terms of the roll, pitch, and yaw dynamic margins. And how would they change the aircraft handling qualities? Um, so I'm only gonna go into brief detail on the short period mode and on the Dutch roll mode because there were a couple of interesting things we learned there, but we did learn some other things about the Fugoin and spiral mode particularly. Um, but for more information, you're gonna have to check out the paper. Um, just for sake of time. Um, so the first is the short period mode. So let's talk about this plot. We have short period damping ratio on the y-axis on the left. On the x-axis, we have the pitch dynamic margin, so increasing from left to right. And on the right axis, y-axis, we have the short period control anticipation parameter. So for the short period mode, the damping ratio and the, and the cap are the two measures that we typically use to, to um, uh, develop uh, or to, to assign handling qualities. Um, and so these, these solid curves that you can see here, that is the dynamic, uh, excuse me, dynamic mode approximation for the short period damping ratio. And this solid curve here is the short period uh, dynamic mode approximation to the, uh, the cap. And these are reformulated to be in terms of the pitch dynamic margin. <laughs> excuse me. Now these markers that are on this curve here and here, those are determined from a numerical linearized uh, system. So we, we linearize the system, we determine numerical values for the short period, uh, the short period eigenvalues, and we can use that to determine these damping ratios. And they disappear up at, past a certain point because at that point, the short period is no longer a complex value. It becomes two reals, and so we can't really assign a, a damping ratio or a cap to that, to that uh, eigenvalue. So I'm going to show us a slightly different plot, but before I get there, there, this is how we define the cap, right? So this is how the cap was defined originally by Beer. Um, and so it's ratio of the short period natural frequency squared divided by the um, change in the normal load factor with respect to angle of attack. And we can use some approximations. And with our dynamic mode approximation reformulated in terms of the pitch dynamic margin, we get this relationship here. And so you can see uh, this relationship was uh, originally developed by Cook and Phillips. Uh, for more information, you can check out the paper. We have a little bit of a, of, of a description there. Um, but using this derivation for the cap, we can take the same data and plot it in terms of handling qualities. 
Um, and so you can see on the x-axis, we have the short period damping ratio. On the y-axis is the short period cap. And uh, this gray line, as we increase um, from right to left, is an increasing uh, pitch dynamic margin. And so what I want to what I want to focus here is that there's this trend as we increase our pitch dynamic margin we're going towards decreasing our damping ratio and increasing our cap. And we'll come back to that in a moment. So the next thing I want to talk about is is uh, well so so in the Dutch roll mode there's three different uh, properties that we typically use to study the handling qualities or assign handling qualities and and one of those is the Dutch roll natural frequency. Um, we do look at the other two, which are the, the damping ratio and the damping rate, um, but for more information, you can check out the paper. Now you can see here, we have this as a function on the x-axis of the yaw dynamic margin, and then as we increase in lightness of shade, we have increasing roll dynamic margin. Now, something I want to stress here is that we noticed that the Dutch roll natural frequency didn't seem to be a strong function of the roll dynamic margin. Um, it didn't seem very, and, and so we took a look at, well, what would happen if we dropped all the terms related to this roll dynamic margin? And we get this relationship shown here for the Dutch roll natural frequency. And we took a look at that, and we noticed that the relationship for the short period natural frequency was very similar. It had an, a very similar relationship. You know, this, this uh, square root of gravity times some lift slope divided by weight times a dynamic margin all over some radius of gyration, which made us wonder, could there be an equivalent to the short period cap in the Dutch roll mode? And so that made us think about it a little bit. And so here's the, the uh, definition of the control anticipation parameter for the short period mode. And we took a look at deriving a similar thing for the Dutch roll mode. So we developed some relation, we defined some relationship which is the ratio of the square of the natural frequency uh, to the change in the side force load factor with respect to side slip angle, which we approximated and we were able to develop a relationship uh, very similarly that the Dutch, or excuse me, the yaw dynamic margin could be direct rela directly related to the short period, uh, or excuse me, the Dutch roll natural frequency. And we use that to define some sort of uh, Dutch roll cap. And if, that were a uh, uh, true value, this is the relationship that we would have. So on the x-axis, we have the Dutch roll damping ratio. On the y-axis, we have the Dutch roll cap. And as you can see, we have a very similar trend that we looked at with the short period uh, handling qualities plot that we go from poor handling qualities up to better handling qualities in terms of increasing uh, 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 yaw dynamic margin. And so, we thought this was really interesting. Now, now we recognize this is all a result of the math, and so we, we would like to look at it a little bit uh, further in detail. So, so just to wrap things up, there were a couple interesting things that we found. The first was the development of this dynamic yaw rate that we looked at earlier, this R cup, this R brevet term. And we also were able to develop roll and yaw static and dynamic margins. And we were able to reformulate these mode approximations to be in terms of, of these roll, pitch, and yaw dynamic margins. And we also found uh, what may be mathematical uh, support for, for a Dutch roll control anticipation parameter. Now, further work should look at what limits, if any, should there be on this Dutch roll cap? You know, is, is this a purely nonsensical thing? Is this just a result of the math? Is there physical intuition behind it? Um, and, and take a look at, the, at it from that perspective. Further work could also to take a look at establishing acceptable CG locations for, for desired handling qualities. And we could also take a look at improving the dynamic mode approximations for increased fidelity, particularly in the Dutch roll mode. And lastly, we could uh, spend some time studying the aileron and rudder per G relations that were developed for the roll and yaw uh, maneuver points um, in, in similar manner that, that the elevator per G relations have been studied in the pitch axis. Thank you for listening. This work was funded by the Office of Naval Research. It was also partially funded by the Warren F. Phillips Student Fellowship Fund. Thank you for listening, and if you've got any questions, shoot them in the comments. Thank you.